All right, Caden Knipe, do you think people trust ministers? Why or why not? Uh, I, I think it's kind of mixed. I think Christians trust ministers. And I think non-Christians are usually either hurt or just looking for a reason not to. So it kind of makes it tough on the minister themselves. There's also a lot of people that are, that are high up and have big names and they fall short. And I think that people think that just because you're a minister, you have to be perfect but that's really not the case. So I think that society and like the Christian community, we need to work on like this idea that all Christians are perfect or all ministers are perfect and that everybody's broken. And yeah, that's why I think that non-Christians don't trust ministers. So why do you think that Christians trust ministers the most? Uh, because they have a reason to, because like, like I have a small town pastor that I grew up around and he's gained my trust and I, and I, I was raised, and I and I know that not everybody's perfect. So even if he were to fall short, I would say, okay, God has grace. I should also have grace. I still think that this person has good, like something to offer. You know, he's a good person. So, yeah. What is your impression on pastors, priests, or spiritual leaders? So just with my personal experience, I think that pastors, spiritual leaders, uh, people like that. Um, they help you with good life advice, and um, they've helped me in times of my life whenever I had questions about where I was going to go um, to school and certain things like that, about even like continuing with basketball. When I had struggle um, with depression and anxiety, I talked to them as well. Uh, it's just people that you can go to if you are in need um, because they have, like, we all have a personal relationship with God, but they also can help us in that relationship as well. So. Do you have a pastor or spiritual leader that you look up to now in this moment? I would say Pastor Matt, my youth pastor back home. Uh, I've probably talked to him the most and relate with him the most because we talk about basketball. We can talk about other things as well. And I'm very comfortable talking to him for bringing anything to him, so yeah. Cool. Okay, Jack, what character traits do you think pastors or spiritual leaders most possess? Well, number one, I think a pastor or a minister should have a, number one, a passion for Christ and to preach the gospel and to share the love of God with other people. And number two, I would say, is always be open for wisdom or guidance from others because it's really hard whenever you're pastoring or leading a bunch of these people to Christ and trying to get them to follow them and believe in them. So getting wisdom from people who have done it longer is a big thing and getting wisdom from god is another big thing as well by reading scripture reading the bible and listening to the holy spirit and always being open in your heart in your uh, mind and just you know just allow your eyes to be open to see what he has for you so okay caleb if you were to face a difficult situation would you talk to a pastor about it why or why not uh, usually it'll be yes because if I'm having a difficult situation, I talk to my grandfather, who is a pastor, been pastoring for about 35, 40 years now. About to retire, but go for him. But uh, back to me. But yeah, usually I do talk to a spiritual leader because other than just being wise, being wise throughout the years. Uh, the spiritual maturity is always a good thing and always having God in the conversation can really help with stress and uh, critical thinking and uh, answering important questions. Cool. Okay, David, if you were going through a difficult situation, would you talk to a pastor about it? Why or why not? Uh, I always say the best situation that you can do is to first pray about everything, uh, pray without ceasing, of course. Um, but yes, of course, if you are able to talk to someone uh, higher up that you trust, and it is your pastor, 100%. I know back home for me personally, I really trust and adore my head senior pastor. Uh, I've known him for about six, going on six and a half years now. And it's just the blessing and the accordance that I have with him is continuing uh, our strength and our relationship with one another and so i've told him some things personally that i haven't told everybody out in the world and so i know that's one of the biggest things that pastors in general can have is trust is trust and the ability to have that relationship with everybody so i think in those situations and those general uh, notes 
it is 100% okay to go up to the pastor first or spiritual leader first because I have uh, not only pastors and spiritual leaders that I am able to talk to and go about with this you know um, my uh, youth helper it wasn't my pastor but a helper for the youth he's one of my you know biggest mentors he's probably only about four like five or six years older than me so I think that's why we're able to relate is because of that age gap that that age gap he's older but he's also young enough to know who I am and understand who we all are as a teenager and everything like that and so because of that we're all able to withstand and go through times and trials and tribulations that you're able to help with and Okay, so here's my summarization. So basically, in interviewing these five candidates and these five people, these five friends, these five people I grabbed after chapel, um, this is my conclusion is that we as Christians kind of gravitate more to our spiritual leaders and our pastors because that's how we're taught, that's how we're trained, that's how we grow up, that's how we have learned to deal with things is to seek advice from somebody that's above us in our spiritual walk um i know that david winchester is going into ministry at some point um i know that jack yonker he's going into ministry he's still kind of young so he still is developing and growing those life skills um but as far as like the other three I know that Caden Knight, he has a good relationship with the Lord, but he's kind of just your average churchgoer, if that makes sense. The kind of average Christian that serves the Lord, serves Jesus, uh, shares the gospel with those around him, but not necessarily going into ministry or, you know, um, having experience in a pastoral role. And so his take on it was more of the positive aspect of seeking advice and seeking counsel. Um, but then you also have Noah Yonker, who, again, is just one of those average churchgoers that loves Jesus, follows the Lord, but shares Jesus with the people around him and having that pastoral connection with, like, like I said, with, um, like he said, with his youth pastor growing up, um, seeking counsel through a pastoral role. Um, and then, but as far as like Caleb Banning, for example, He's more of the Christian that he still doesn't make, you know, the necessarily right choices in life. And so when he does go through those difficult situations, um, uh, he's been trained and he's been taught that, you know, when it comes to struggling with Christianity or struggling with your faith or this, that, and the fourth of going through a difficult situation, yes, he goes to a pastoral or spiritual leader in his life because those are the people that are around him like his grandfather and his father at one point but he himself isn't in that type of position uh, of going into a pastoral role so he's the one that i would kind of look towards and say hey when you're going through something like this do you look up to a pastor and his answer is yes because he does believe in jesus he does follow the lord but not to the capacity of say the average christian like noah or david or Caden or even jack and so i think that it's important for us to as christians yes trust in our pastoral leaders but also as christians to help encourage those non-christians that that are struggling with something help be and kind of direct them towards a um, spiritual leader or a pastor and if that person say doesn't trust a pastor or, or doesn't believe in God or or doesn't have that kind of be that for them not necessarily as a pastor but more of a spiritual kind of in the Dominican they call it a padre espiritual which is like a spiritual father uh, or a spiritual mother or just kind of like being that role of hey there's Jesus in me and I'm going to help you through this in whatever way I can um in whatever circumstance that may be. So that's my take on it. That's my little summary of it all. And so, yeah.